Hey everybody, and welcome to Glory Bell Church Online. In just a few minutes, Pastor Chuck's gonna be sharing a message, but right now would be a great time to share this link with your friends and family. So go ahead, we'll wait. Just share it away. All right, if you would like to connect with us, you can text GV Connect to 97000, or if you'd like to partner with us through giving, you can give online at glorybell.com. Right now is the time where you can get comfortable, get some room, lift your hands, clap along, sing along as we go in to worship. We love you. Why don't you worship with us? Come on. All right, sing it out. So people come together, strangers, neighbors. Blood is one. Children of generations of every nation of kingdom come. Don't let, so don't let your heart travel. Hold your head up high, don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. So take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where help comes from.
Yeah. 
Welcome in, Glory Bell family. It is great to worship with you, uh, but hopefully this is the last or one of the last weekends before we get together right here in person. Hey, I'm really excited uh, because on June 7th, mark your calendars, we are opening up the doors uh, to have church in person right here, 218 North 6th Street. It's going to be a great, great time. So all the Glory Bell family, uh, thanks for tuning in. If you are visiting online for the very first time, or maybe it's your second time, you're just checking us out, hey, welcome in. We're all about introducing people to Jesus because we want to make heaven crowded. And m perhaps that's you. Maybe you've never met Jesus. I'm praying that through the worship you were experienced earlier in the sermon today, that you, you feel the love of Jesus. Uh, and at the end of the sermon, we're going to give you an opportunity to commit your life to Christ. And uh, we celebrate those who make fresh starts with that commitment. But again, to all of our church family, welcome back. If you'd like to stay in the loop about all things Glory Bell, like for instance, June 7th, we're still up in the air. Are we going to launch back or reopen with one or two services? Uh, we're, we're still filling that out. Uh, so stay in the loop. The best and easiest way to do that is to text Glory Bell Fam, that's all one word, to 97000. Uh, and we'll give you a weekly update on what's happening with the church. And if you're new and you're like, man, I kind of like this church thing, I like Glory Bell, I like the worship and the sermon, uh, we would love to help answer any questions you have and get you better connected to our church. And again, the best and easiest way to do that is to text GB Connect to 97. Thousand. We're going to get into the sermon in just a little bit, but I cannot go any further without first pausing to say a big thank you for your generosity. Uh, you are so faithful in your giving, and it's made a huge impact uh, because you may not realize this, but church online is not cheap. And uh, with your generosity, we've been able to make some significant purchases for the church because we know that excellence honors God and inspires people, even if that means church online. And to make church excellent online, it's, it gets pricey. Uh, but because of your faithfulness, we've been able to purchase about $14,000 in audio, video, and lighting equipment. And so we say thank you. Come on, right where you are, give yourself an applause. Thank you for paying your tithes. Thank you for going above the tithe and giving generously. We are so appreciative of that. And also, your giving has made it possible for us to have what we call Glory Bell Gives Back multiple times throughout COVID-19. We've partnered with local businesses. We've taken care of our flock, uh, the people right here in our church. And we've also partnered with uh, community leaders. And we're doing it again, uh, so be on the lookout this Friday. We are set to partner with Guest Family Barbecue and one of our friends, Legacy Church, as we serve another 1,000 meals for free to those that are in need. So again, that's all possible because of your giving. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you would like to give and be a part of what we're doing, you haven't already, the best way to do that is to go online and visit glorybell.com forward slash giving. But now it's time to jump into the sermon and I want to start with a word of prayer for you as you're watching today. Heavenly Father, I thank you for an opportunity to come together and to worship the risen Savior, the one who gives us hope, the one that cares about the smallest of details and the greatest of needs in our life. And that is you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus. I thank you for uh, an opportunity to use technology to spread the gospel, to, to share the greatest news this world has ever known. I pray for those watching today that need the inspiration, those that need information and revelation, that it would come to them in clear, profound ways. I pray that the words that I share today would come across with authenticity, Lord, that they would come across most of all with anointing. And that those watching would engage and leave uh, this experience better. In Jesus' name, everybody says a good amen right where you are. Come on. I can hear you. I can hear you virtually. Hey, one of the things we like to do before we jump into the sermon is say our Glory Bell Declaration. I'm going to say it. It'll be there on the screen. Say it with me out loud. Gather the family around. I'm here on purpose because I have a purpose. My mind is open and my heart is ready to receive because God is not finished with me yet. My best days, my best days, my best days are right in front of me and I have victory in my life because Jesus 
lives in me. Man, I'm fired up about that. I love the way to start the day is through positive speaking because we know that in our words is the power to speak life or death. So say that declaration often and declare it until you begin to believe it because your best days are right in front of you. Now, as we open up the Word of God, I want to share with you on this subject, get ready, Stay Woke Part 3. Stay Woke Part 3. Uh, in light of what's happening in our nation, I can't uh, not address what we've experienced over the last seven days with the tragic news of Ahmaud Arbery. And I want to pause right here and just say to all of you that are watching that we at Glory Bell, we mean it when we say we're not like family, we are family. And we mean it when we say we're better together. And we mean it when we say there is one blood. And so to those that are out there still questioning why this stuff is happening, I wish I had all the answers and I don't, but I do know the one who has the answer, and that is Jesus. Jesus proves yet again, always and forever, that his love wins and to fight racism, to fight the social injustices that really are the root of this phrase, stay woke. The only way to really come about that is through love. And we at Glory Bell are committed to do that. As your pastor and spiritual leader in this community, uh, I'm going to stand for uh, truth. I'm going to stand for love. We as a church are going to combat the injustices because we're going to be known as a church that rights the wrongs in our community. We're going to be known as a church that is a diverse church. And so every weekend when we open up our church doors, we're, we're reminding ourselves, we're reminding our community that we are better together, that we are better when diversity comes together and we are strengthened. And uh, I just want to say to all of you, we love every single one of you. We love that our church is a diverse church, diverse in age, diverse in ethnicity, diverse in social economic status, and we are committed to seeing social injustices and racial injustices remedied, racism eliminated, and we believe that there are so many good people out there. We're going to celebrate the goodness of our God and the fact that love does win and brings us together. All right, now as we've addressed the cultural injustices. I want to speak to the spiritual injustice. So many of us have been struggling to find the calling of God in our life, the purpose of God in our life. And I believe God has sent me on a mission to remind you to stay woke to what God is calling you to do, to stay woke to his plans and his purposes for the earth. Don't be lulled into complacency. Don't get so satisfied into uh, the comfort that we have here in America. Don't get stubborn about the things that you've experienced and miss out on what God is calling you to do. We started out talking about we are spiritual giants. Don't be sleeping on what God wants to do in and through us. Then last or a couple of weeks ago we talked about Jacob and the difference between his experience where he woke up and said surely the presence of the Lord was here and I missed it and then his next encounter where he wrestled with an angel and his name was changed was that he was awake during the night. I want to encourage you. I hope you've taken this time during the coronavirus and COVID-19 to allow your spirit to be awakened because there are some things happening in our world around us and we cannot be in the dark. Because for such a time as this, you and I have been called into this world to be the salt and the light, to stomp out darkness, to uh, uh, eliminate the evil in our world. And to, the only way we can do that is if we are awake to what God wants to do in and through us. So our root passage, our home for this, for this, our home text for this series comes from 1 Thessalonians. It's Paul addressing the church in Thessalonica. And I just want to read it here to begin with. Now concerning how and when all this will happen, dear brothers and sisters, we don't really need to write to you, he says, for you know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly like a thief in the night. When people are saying everything is peaceful and secure, then disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labor pains begin and there will be no escape. Again, what good is text without context? You can't stop there because that sounds like horrible news. But the good news is, but you aren't in the dark, Paul writes. You're not in the dark about these things, and you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief, for you are all children of the light. Come on, take heart in that. 
You are children of the light in the day, and you don't belong to darkness in the night. So be on your guard, not asleep like the others. Stay alert, or in other words, stay woke. Stay woke and be clear-headed. Night is a time when people sleep and drinkers drink. But let us who live in the light be clear-headed, protected by the armor of faith and love, and wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation. Such a powerful passage. Again, those of you who have been tuning in and watching, you've heard us read that for uh, three out of the last four weeks. But as soon as you get tired of hearing it, somebody is just now hearing it for the first time. And it's so important that we are awakened to what happens or what God wants to do in our life. Sunday, December 7th, 1941, is a day that will live in infamy, as history calls it. It's the day, you know the day, speaking of, is known as Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor is one of the most tragic days in all of American history. 2,043 American men and women lost their lives to this attack on Pearl Harbor. Another 1,100 plus were grossly injured. It's a day that America would love to forget. Even more tragic about this attack is that it could have prevented, or at the very least, it could have been largely minimalized. Warning signs were everywhere, but were disregarded as unimportant. Government officials have since admitted their complacency. The attack on Pearl Harbor was successful because the U.S. Navy became satisfied. There wasn't a lack of weapons There wasn't a lack of aircraft or military personnel. Everything was in place. They had everything they needed to prevent such an attack. Everything. They had it all. And yet, it's a day that we wish we could forget. A day where a grave number of lives were lost because they were blinded by their own satisfaction. The Japanese launched an attack that crippled the U.S. Navy, shocked the U.S. government, and sent America into World War II, which in the coming months and years would equate to the loss uh, loss of more than 20 million lives. Four years after the attack, after millions of lives had been lost, a peace treaty was signed. The U.S. recovered and retaliated against Japan. It was the days following the initial attack that Japanese Admiral Yamamoto is believed to have said, I fear all we have done is to awaken a sleeping giant and fill him with terrible resolve. That story, I don't know about you, maybe you know somebody, a grandparent or somebody who suffered from that attack. I know we all uh, have been impacted. Uh, We've made sweeping changes as a nation because of that tragedy that happened that Sunday in 1941. But can I tell you, while we're talking spiritually, I pray that we never have to get to the point where we are attacked at such a grave level that we wake up and realize what we could have or what we should have done. No, now is the time for us to stay woke. It's it's important that you understand that because there is an enemy out there. He is out there roaring like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. This is not a joke. This is, this is serious. Our soul is at stake. Your children's souls are at stake. Your family's soul is at stake. Our community is in need of the answer, and we can't be lulled into sleep because we're satisfied or maybe we're ignorant of what's happening around us. No, wake up. Don't miss out on the need that God, God has a call for you right now in this moment. He has you at your place of employment for a reason. He has you in your family for a reason. That thing that maybe is frustrating you, that is maybe the thorn in your side. Guess what? God can use that to, to, to uh, propel you to share the gospel, to reach people. Paul, the greatest uh, writer in the New Testament, he, he speaks of that. He had many things that led him to to discomfort. And guess what? Many people found Jesus because he was uh, willing to stay woke and uh, live with the suffering and the the things that he had to fight with uh, week in and week out. 
and story after story we read, whether he was shipwrecked or in prison or beaten, he was willing to fight for the cause. And I'm praying that you and I will wake up and understand that there is an enemy. There is a spiritual battle in, in place that we need to be alert to. I want to challenge you with one more passage of Scripture. It's a Scripture that not a lot of uh, sermons have been written from or preached about. It's the story of the ten virgins. It, it, it's picked up in Matthew uh, chapter 25. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. I'm going to start in verse 1. It says, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. Did you catch that? It's half and half split right down the middle. This is Jesus talking five foolish and five wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps. But the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were roused by the shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. The five foolish ones asked the others, Please give us some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, We don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. Verse 10, But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, when the five other bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, Believe me, I don't know you. So you too must keep watch, for you do not know the day or the hour of my return. Hey, church family, those of you watching, this is serious business. It's important that we are awakened to what God is wanting to do and the, His return on the earth. I've said it the last few weeks. Are we saying that the Lord's return is this day and it's coming soon? Uh, no, but I am telling you we're one day closer. And we, while we don't know the day or the hour, I do know that we're one day closer. And you can look around and see the season. While we don't know the day, we can look around and see that the, the Scripture is being fulfilled right before our very eyes. We can't have the wool pulled over our eyes. You've heard that phrase before. No, we must be alert to what is happening around us. I want to give you four reasons why the five virgins missed out. Number one, if you're taking notes, again, note takers are history makers. The number one reason why I believe the five virgins missed out, well, is their lack of preparation. When I think of preparation, I think of practice. When I think of practice, I can't help but think about sports. And this is the thing. Practice makes perfect. I've always heard that. But the truth is, perfect practice makes perfect. Uh, because you can practice all the wrong things and not be ready for game day. Emmett Smith said it like this. Uh, all men are created, just some practice more in the preseason and in the off season. Hey, it's really important that you understand the grind that you're in right now. The grind that you're in right now. It's practice for the return of the Lord. And it's important. <laughs> We're all created equal, but will you put in the practice, the preparation that it takes? Because not only does it impact you, but it impacts those around you. Uh, there's, a, there's a great series out right now, especially if you're a basketball fan, especially if you're a Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan fan. Come on, he is the GOAT. For those of you who need to be educated, that is not an animal I'm referring to. That is the greatest of all time, okay? Michael Jordan, The Last Dance. And in just the latest episode, it shows that Michael Jordan, as the greatest of all time, man, he never slacked off, even in practice. Man, he hustled. He put in the effort and the work. Yeah, he was the best in the league. He was the best on the team. And he pushed others. He brought others along with him. But it started in the practice, in the, re in the rehearsal. Because this is the deal. Uh, game day is easy if you practice hard. 
And I want to tell you, when you put in the effort, when you put in the preparation, what does that look like? Well, when you put in, just like in a relationship with your, with your wife or your husband or your girlfriend, your boyfriend, the dating is easy if you put in the sacrifice, if you put in the commitment, if you put in the effort to make them first and a priority, then the loving part comes easy and natural. The same is the case in your relationship with Jesus. Man, if you get into God's word, if you live an honorable life, if you put him first, if you're paying your tithes, if you're serving at the church, you're joining the dream team, if you make those sacrifices and those commitments, then the loving side of who Jesus is, I believe, comes a lot easier. easier. The second reason why I believe uh, the virgins missed out the five foolish was, number two, uh, they were not willing to pay the price. Not willing to pay the price the price. You see, oil is pricey. Oil is pricey. I want to tell you, living for God is one of the most joyous things that you could ever experience. And your salvation is free, but walking out your salvation will cost you something. Are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to cut ties with some people, some weights, the sin that so easily besets us, as Scripture calls it. Because there are some things that you have now that you can't take with you there. And you may have to cut those out of your life. It will cost you something. Oil is pricey. The third reason why these virgins failed to make it is they failed to make it personal. You saw it in the Scripture. They said to the five wise bridesmaids, hey, can we have some of your oil? Let us borrow some of yours. Now let me make this a little bit humorous for a moment. Uh, You may have to go back to your young adult days. I can remember Ashley and I being young adults and then young marrieds when we were hanging out with all of our friends. Come on, college age students, you can relate to this. You know what I'm talking about. You go out with your friends to a restaurant. Maybe you're going to, uh, back in the day it was Chili's. Now, I wouldn't be caught dead in Chili's. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, I, back in the day, Chili's was the jam. And we would go all the time after church with our friends hanging out. And uh, we always had this one guy. <laughs> this one guy. Whether, it, he, he, whether he didn't have the money or he didn't want to spend his own money, my man showed up. He would get water. He would munch on everybody else's chips and salsa. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, that guy. And then he wouldn't even order an entree. Y'all, my man was so cheap. He did not order his own entree. He would, he would eat a full course meal based on everybody else's leftovers. Hey, I want to tell you when it comes to your relationship with Jesus, it doesn't work like that. It's got to become personal. Is he your Lord in Savior. you got to make it personal. You can't make it to heaven living off somebody else's salvation experience. I want you to know that our Lord desires to have a personal relationship with you. A personal relationship with you. You can't make it uh, on the experience of others. I look in the Old Testament. Saul, the first king, he goes to uh, the prophet and he says, uh, go seek the Lord. Go seek your Lord on my behalf. Well, that was part of the prophet's job, but here's the difference between Saul and David. David said, O Lord, my God. I I think it's really important that you get those personal pronouns right. Is Jesus personal in your life? Is he your Lord and your Savior? It's so important. The fourth reason I believe the five virgins, the five foolish virgins missed out is they had poor focus. We've talked about this over the last uh, few months here at Glory Bell, but perspective is so critical because your perspective determines your reality. And it's, it's, it's the difference between the two spies who saw the land as we can take it, we can conquer, and the ten who said, no, we look like grasshoppers in their eyes. It's, it's important that you have the right perspective and that your focus is on the main Thing. You've heard that before, right? Keep the main thing the main thing. You probably heard that phrase too, like, let's begin with the end in mind. Well, here's the truth. How many of us have really approached our relationship with Jesus with the end in mind? 
if we're really honest with ourselves, very few of us got up this morning and said, this could be the day. This could be the day that the Lord returns. This could be the day that I could be called in to an eternal relationship with Jesus. No, because we lose focus. We let second things become first things. We, think, we let things that are not in the right priorities take priority and precedent in our life. And I want to encourage you, unlike the five foolish, let's be like the five wise and keep our intent on the main thing. Let's begin with the end in mind. It's important that we stay focused. I think of my son, Renly. You know, he's seven years old. I talk about him almost every sermon. Uh, but the truth is, is he gives me so many sermon illustrations. If you've had young kids, you can relate. Maybe you can relate to your childhood in this next story. But anytime we go on a long trip, and we've been going on a lot here lately, uh, back and forth to Houston for our son Ryder's doctor's appointment, Renly is prone to ask, you know the question, are we there yet? And it doesn't matter how many times we tell him, no, we're not there yet. It's going to be another two hours. We still have 45 more minutes. No, we're not. He is going to ask until I threaten to punish him because he is concerned about the end destination. And as we bring it home to a close today, I want to remind you one of the best ways to stay woke is remember this world is not our home, but heaven is our home. And we cannot afford to be complacent because of all the things that we have in this life, whether that's pain or it's sorrow or it's joy or blessings. Uh, guess what? We are called to an eternal relationship with Jesus. I've heard it said before, a lot of people can't wait to get to heaven to spend time with Jesus. They just don't want to spend any time with him here on earth. Guess what? we got to realign our focus. Let's not be like the five foolish, but let's be like the five wives, wise uh, uh, bridesmaids and have our attention focused on what is most important. As we come to a close today, I want to encourage you in the last few verses of the first text I read, 1 Thessalonians. It ends with something powerful. We've been reading it, but I haven't read it yet today. Let me remind you what it says. For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour out his anger on us. Christ died for us. Whether we are dead or alive, when he returns, we can live with him forever. So we encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. I hope you hear this sermon today and that you're not discouraged. I hope you're inspired. I hope you're informed. But I hope you understand the importance of being awoke or awakened to all that God wants to do in your life. Now is not the time to sleep on God's call for your life or the purpose that he has. He has a purpose for you in this earth. He has a plan for what he wants to do right now. And let's not miss out on that. If you are watching today and you've never put your faith in Jesus, this is a perfect opportunity. We want to give you an opportunity to make a fresh start. I just read to you in those two verses that Jesus died so that we could have eternal salvation with our Father. That's the best news that we could ever long for. And I hope you find encouragement in that. Romans 10, 9 says that if we will confess with our mouth and we believe in our heart, that we will have salvation. So let's make that commitment today. Will you pray together with me, all of you, right where you are? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you that he died so that we wouldn't have to. We rejoice in this salvation, and we know that he is returning soon one day for us. Lord, we understand that the oil is pricey. We understand that the calling that you have for us is to make it personal. And that there's got to be an element of, of preparation. So, Lord, we prepare our hearts for those of us right now that may be praying who've never committed our lives to you, for the, for, for, have never done it, maybe the first time or first time in a long time. We're making that fresh start commitment. I thank you, Lord, that you are giving us a fresh start. You're just wiping the slate clean and you're embracing us. We thank you for a second chance. But we thank you for the promise of salvation in eternity with you. We receive that. We ask you to forgive us of our sins and make us more like you. In Christ's name we pray and everyone said amen. Amen and amen. Finally, as we leave today, let me pray a blessing upon all of you. 
Thank you again for tuning in. I'm delighted to, to, to speak with you virtually, but I can't wait to be back in the room. Again, be, be on the lookout. June 7th is coming. It's going to be awesome. Until then, I pray that the Lord would bless you and that he would keep you, that his face would shine down upon you, and our God would give you his peace. I believe that for you in Jesus' name. We love you, and we're praying for you. If you need anything from us, be sure to direct message us or comment below. Until next time, God bless.